This Sun server right here is my primary server I use for a lot of my home lab duties and just messing around with server stuff with. It's also a pretty big NAS with four 8 terabyte drives, four 4 terabyte drives, and four 500 gig drives. Problem is, all those drives are basically full now, so I don't really have any more space to put my files. And there's a few solutions to this. The first solution would be to just add more drives to the system, but the problem is all of these bays on the server are full, so the easy solution isn't there. The next solution is to replace some of my drives with larger drives, like replacing these 500 gigs I have in here with like a new 14 tail drive. The problem is, I already have a lot of hard drives laying around that are smaller, so I'm going with another approach, and it's this using the SAS JBOD here. So this is a SAS JBOD, which essentially means a big external hard drive. Now this isn't like a normal external hard drive that connects via USB or eSATA, this connects via SAS, which is more of a large server type connection. And the advantages of SAS is it supports port multipliers built in, so it can be split from like four ports here in this case to 12, and it's also just better when it comes to server use, when it comes to longer distances, signal integrity, and speed, as this cable I'm using here will allow for 24 gigabits of speed as it has four six gigabit channels. But unfortunately for me, I didn't make myself a super plug and play configuration because I'm gonna be using internal SAS ports on my server here because I have extra ports from the built-in SAS expander on my Cisco server. And I'm gonna be using the internal port on here because I can't easily get an SFF8643 to SFF8088 cable. I'm gonna be going to the internal SFF8087 cable. Let's take a closer look at this Supermicro JBOD to take a look at what I'm talking about here. This Supermicro JBOD I believe is built off the 846 chassis that they have and it's pretty darn simple taking a look inside what it's doing. As you can see there's no motherboard, processors, RAM or any of that stuff. All it has is the drive bays in the front and then this little cable that connects the front drive bays to this little connector in the back. And this connector on the back is SFF8088, which is an older SAS cable now, and why I'm gonna need the adapter. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna use this cable that I got here, run a connection through the back of it to here, and then run this cable up to my main server. This is the inside of my main server here, and looking at the middle here, I can see all those ports here. This is the built-in SAS expander that plugs this little card on the left here, which is my HBA. On the SAS expander, as I can see, there's three empty SFF8643 ports that I can plug my external JBOD into. And because this is kind of a hacky job, I'm just going to route it through one of these back PCI Express ports. Well, it was a tight fit, but I got the cable connected, so both of these two guys are now essentially one whole unit when it comes to storage. And this system now has access to all 24 drive bays on both of these. Um, it is as simple as just plugging in the power and turning on the SAS cables so they were both plugged in. But I only see the blue lights on some of these, so I'm not sure what that means. But everything from here should be software configuration from now on. So my drives and my SAS JBOD weren't showing up originally and it just didn't seem to work when it was being plugged into the SAS expander in my Cisco server. So I had to re-plug the cables in a different way to get it to work. Instead of using the cable which I wanted to use, the SSF8087 to 8643, I had to unplug one of the ports from the internal HBA inside this server and plug it with an SFF8087 to an SFF8088 cable and then just use the integrated SFF8088 external ports on the SAS JBOD from Supermicro. It's not as optimal in my opinion because I still don't get the full bandwidth to all of these drives, but it works perfectly fine and 24 gigabit for each set of these 12 drives is perfectly fine for my use. So I don't think it'll cause any real world issues. And right now all the drives show up in software for this server. So it's time to start configuring the drives and making it work correctly. Now let's talk about software and how I'm gonna set up these drives in this system. So my main server runs Proxmox and since ZFS is included and I'm a big ZFS fanboy, I'm just gonna use ZFS here. And taking a look at my screen running LSBOK, I can see all the new disks here, so I can find all seven of the two terabyte hard drives it currently has in it, which is great, which is exactly what I want. And the cool thing with these SAS JBODs is it's exactly the same as if you added the system drive locally. So I can do something like um, smart control of the drive and get all of the data. So if I run SDX, for example, I can see that this is a two terabyte drive and I see full smart data that it has like 37,000 hours and stuff. 
So these aren't new drives at all. So now my question is how do I want to use them? So my current plan is to make a single RAID Z2 with all eight of these two terabyte hard drives. That makes the most sense to me as it gives me the six terabytes of space I need for that seed box already. I think it gives me a little bit of extra playground which I'm gonna put some VMs on that I use left often and some other things. I plan to get this pool relatively fragmented and just IO heavy and that leaves my main pool so it has less IO and less activity for my like video projects and other activities that I wanna have more speed at. So let's set that up now. So I'm gonna do sudo z pool um, create. I'm gonna call it um, seed for seed box. And then we're gonna just do raid z2. And I'm gonna just start dis listing the disks. Now technically this is s, um, now this is a suboptimal way to do this because you should be using the IDs of the drive instead of just the drive letters. So I've created a RAID Z2, and it's telling me that it's already part of a pool. So I've used these hard drives in a different pool in the past, and it's complaining. So I'm gonna have to put the dash F flag in so that it makes sure to overwrite all the other data on the drive. Well, I found a weird issue when I was using the dash F flag, I was getting an out of memory error, so I wiped them all with wipefs A, and now it creates it. So now I have this pool, which has 14.5 tibby bytes of free space, basically nothing used, and I get to start copying files from my seed NAS, as I like to call it. So I'm gonna copy those six terabytes of files on here, and then start copying some VMs. To help manage my data better, I'm gonna create a few different ZFS um, data sets to copy the data to. So I'm gonna create like a seed slash um, seed box. I'm gonna create a seed slash um, VM to store some VM data on it. And maybe I'll make just like a temp files one too to store some temp files on. So now I have a few data sets on here, and then I'm gonna start copying files, setting up some NFS shares, and just using it as my main data store. I had a lot of options though with drives that I could do, things like adding another set of drives to my main Z pool, and adding another VDEV in the pool. I could have set them up with MDADM. I could have done many other things, but I just thought it'd be simpler to create a single RAID Z2 and start kind of separating the data in that pool. I also find it nice to kind of separate pools based off the IO I expect on the pools because that way if I have like a pool that's seeding with a lot of little writes, I can have my main NAS show not be affected by that, which just helps increase the speed of my main drives. Thanks for watching this little video about upgrading my NAS by adding a SAS JBOD filled with drives and subscribe for more videos like this in the future.